What's going on everybody, DigiValentine here right about now. This video will be a bit of a mashup in terms of what I'll be speaking about. Most of it will be centred around a few small things that had been data mined from Nights into Dreams. Uh, these discoveries are nothing too groundbreaking, but they're still very interesting enough to be worth documenting. Then towards the end of the video I'm going to talk about something else related to Nights. It's not part of the data mine itself, but it regards something that was found elsewhere. Something that I think is strangely peculiar and I wanted to mention it, if for nothing more than to just have some fun with this odd development, um, but we'll get to that later. Firstly, let's talk about some of these other discoveries. These first two are assets found from the E3 beta demos data, and don't seem to be present in the data for the final Sega Saturn version. Digging through the common objects file, a strange pillar was discovered. The item is green, blue and yellow in colour, containing rings that populate the central shaft. It's unknown what it could have been used for, but the fact that it was located in the common level objects file means that it would have had the ability to appear in any level that required it. In the final game, there doesn't appear to be any common level object that takes a form similar to this. Due to its weird appearance, it's difficult to speculate what it even is. At first glance, it looks like some kind of electricity pylon, or some other object that generates energy. But due to the bright, wild colours, it gives off the vibe of some sort of circus feature, like part of a set design or something. As a common level object, it does make me wonder if it was meant to be interacted with in some way, though I'm not entirely sure how you would interact with something like this. It also could be part of a bigger object that was never finished. In the common object's data, all object parts are in separate pieces that can then be formed into a final structure, so it's entirely possible that this pillar might have been a piece to a bigger object, an object that they didn't get to finish before they scrapped the entire asset altogether. One final thing to note is the data address for this asset. In the E3 beta demo, the address naturally points to this unused pillar. In the final game, however, this pillar is no longer in the game's data, so is the address still pointing to anything? Well, in fact it is. In the final version of the game, the address now points to the bonus ball item, which is a collectible that gives you bonus points if you successfully keep a link going. It's unknown if the unused pillar might have had any conceptual relation to the bonus ball seen in the final game. The two items could be completely unrelated and the bonus ball just ended up filling an empty address slot once the pillar had been scrapped, or was there some similar gameplay functions between the pillar and the bonus ball? Due to all the oddities surrounding this pillar, I personally can't think of any solid theories which I agree with. I really don't know what this thing is. If you have any ideas of your own then honestly let me know in the comments, I'd be interested in seeing what you think it might be. The second asset is this huge sprite from the level Frozen Bell. Now it's using artwork that does appear in the final game, these arrows and wavy lines make appearances in Frozen Bell already, so it's not the art itself that's intriguing. What makes this discovery so bizarre is the sheer size of this texture. In the level there are no railway signs or wavy lines this big, leading me to think that these might be placeholder images for what would have been other art textures that never got created, and if that were to be the case, it then leads me to wonder just what sort of 3D object was this unfinished texture going to map itself to exactly. Because it's massive, there's nothing really of this size within Frozen Bell that this texture could apply itself to, which then makes me further speculate that there might have been a large 3D object of some kind that could have once been intended for Frozen Bell but was then cancelled, leaving this texture as some sort of remnant of it. Of course, I'm making a reach within a reach there. We have no idea what this could have been used for. For all we know, it could have just been some sort of test texture and was never intended to be part of anything anyway. Who knows? These next few objects are data mined from the final released version of Nights into Dreams. In an earlier video I briefly mentioned two unused buildings had been data mined from the final level Twin Seeds. We can now see these buildings with much clearer textures and this is likely how they were intended to look had they been used. The last time I didn't really speak too much about this, so now I want to take a few minutes to elaborate my thoughts on this discovery. As a final level, Twin Seeds plays a little differently to the main levels. In the main levels, you loop around laps that all lead through the Idia Palace, but at the start of Twin Seeds, you get thrown all the way across to the other side of the map, and the challenge is to make your way back to the palace in one long extended run. 
The level takes place in a dreamscape of Twin Seed City, so things that are usually on ground level, like streets and buildings, are floating in the air. But I've always noticed how empty and barren this stage looks for a final level. Entire chunks of this stage are void of any structural features. You have absolutely tons of level items to collect, and there's the starry night skybox and the clouds below you, but aside from that, there's not much in the way of identifiable structures populating the level. The first two sections are especially empty, seeing you fly for stretches at a time without seeing anything but collectible items. But then suddenly, in the third section, there's a floating building. This leads me to theorise that the two unused buildings might have been intended to populate the first and second sections of the level, since they're the areas that are the emptiest. This part here especially feels like a large object is meant to be positioned in the centre of the area, as you fly around the outside in a huge circle collecting items. There's no proof of that, but that's what makes sense to me. I'm not sure why these buildings go unused. I think the development period was probably running out of time around this point, so maybe that's what factored into them getting cut. It could also be a memory issue. Perhaps the buildings were taking up too much resources and the devs omitted them in favour of keeping in the Twin Seeds Tower section at the very end of the stage. But honestly, who can say for sure? An unused background was discovered. It depicts a dry desert area with a mountain range. This image can be connected and looped seamlessly, likely meaning that it was once intended to be used as part of a skybox. Some fans might be quick to jump the gun and say this is linked to the level Stick Canyon, which does take place in the desert. But this unused background doesn't originate from Stick Canyon's data. Instead, this image was data mined from Jackal's boss fight. Needless to say, but this sort of background doesn't match Jackal's boss arena, so that now raises the question as to why this is in there to begin with. Well, it could be a number of things. It could have been intended for Stick Canyon, but was moved to Jackal's boss arena for some reason, though that seems somewhat of an odd and irresponsible thing to do, so I don't think it's that. The other theory is that this could have been the original background for Jackal's arena, before it was changed to be an ominous nighttime sky. Though, if that is the case, it begs the question as to why it was changed. Perhaps it didn't fit the tone of Jackal's arena, so the devs went with something a little more eerie instead. These are just theories, of course. Why Jackal has an unused desert background located in his boss data is anybody's guess. Actually, hold that thought for a second, because while I was in the middle of editing this video, I received an update about this. It turns out that this desert background might not have been intended for the skybox at all, but instead it seems to be mapped to some sort of unused 3D model. This weird half-spherical asset was just data mined from Jackal's boss data, and the desert image maps onto it. So while this discovery debunks it being a scrapped background for Jackal's arena, it now raises new questions like, what the bloody hell is this object meant to be? Because it doesn't look like anything logical. And I think that might be the point. I don't think this 3D model is meant to be seen as an actual physical object within the stage. It's not meant to be viewed as an item like Jackal's boxes or his guillotine, for example. I think its intentions are for it to be seen as an optical illusion of sorts. Sometimes in game design, the developers can bend and warp assets of the environment to make something appear differently to how it actually is. The biggest and most well-known illusion are skyboxes themselves, where the sky isn't really a sky that you can approach, but is an image mapped to the outside parameters of the gameplay area, giving us the illusion that a sky is there, hence the name a skybox. And I think due to the size and shape of this weird half-spherical object, and due to the fact that it shows us a random desert for some reason, I think this might have been an illusion that took place within the boss arena somewhere. An illusion that makes it seem like a desert could be visible from a certain angle. And this is just my speculation, of course. There is absolutely no proof that that is the case. I'm just looking at the evidence provided and trying to make sense of it. And the only sense I can seem to make from this weird 3D model is it might have been intended to provide an illusion within the gameplay area. One final thing to say about this before we move on is that this asset is definitely unused. In all my years fighting Jackal, I have never seen this appear at any point. If it's not unused, then it could be a very well hidden easter egg, one that we haven't figured out yet. Perhaps there might be a way to get it to trigger if a specific condition is met during Jackal's boss fight. I guess for the time being, we'll have to study this discovery some more and see if any further answers present themselves. One other thing I want to quickly bring up is Knights' shocked facial expression for when they take damage. Now, this asset is used in the final game, but as it turns out, it's actually broken. The colour palette for Knights' mouth is not displaying as intended. If you look closely, you can just faintly see the outline of a tongue inside Knights' mouth. The pixels for the tongue are mapped to a different part of the palette data, causing the tongue to incorrectly display as black. 
This mock-up image can give us a rough idea of what Knights' face is supposed to look like if the error didn't occur. Now, we're moving on to this other strange development. It's nothing major, and I really wouldn't take this too seriously, but I think it's definitely worth talking about. I guess it can be classified as a discovery because something was technically found, but it wasn't part of the data mine itself, nor is the discovery of this asset what I want to focus on, but rather something presented within the asset has intrigued me. Let me explain what happened. MTH on Twitter had been browsing online, looking through old video game patents that Sega filed for back in the day. They happened to come across one patent in particular connected to Knights in the Dreams' A-Life system. And you can read this patent yourself, I've left a link to it in the description. The patent goes into detail regarding how the A-Life system works. Now, I haven't read much of it myself because the legal language in these sorts of documents always confuses the hell out of me, but from what I can gather, a portion of it seems to cover how Nightopians interact with Nightmare and Minions to create offspring that combines elements of the two. These explanations are accompanied by reference images, which, um, seem to have been created in MS Paint. Yeah, like looking at those lines right there, yeah, you see them lines? That's a mid-1990s MS Paint kind of thing. But jokes aside, these sorts of documents don't need high quality art anyway. They just need to show the details of what you're trying to file for. So as long as the images are clear, then I guess anything goes. It's when we look through these reference images that we find ourselves coming across a sketch of a nightmare and enemy which I find to be of particular interest. This minion has a head with a couple of protrusions coming out from it, while their body is comprised of a long snake-like tail with fins running along the top and bottom. And I can't help but notice the similarities between this crude drawing and the scrapped nightmare and minion that was discovered in the Datamine project, the one we suspect to be the creature named Cruel. They both have a head with a similar amount of protrusions coming out of it, and a long, finned, snake-like tail. There are no other limbs to be seen on either of them, there are no other major features or aspects to the design, it's a very straightforward looking creature. And as far as abstract adaptations go, this honestly does look like it might be referencing the cut minion. If this is true, I actually wonder how this came about in the first place. Clearly, whoever was creating the document needed reference material to draw from, so somebody from the art department at Sonic Team must have decided to send them references to what clearly is a Nightopian, a Hollow, and then, for some reason, possibly this unused Nightmare. I mean, I'm just guessing at that, I don't actually know what happened. And we don't even know for sure if this sketch is supposed to be referencing Cruel in the first place. This all could just be a really weird coincidence. But in the odd chance that it isn't, then we might be looking at a second appearance of a nightmare and creature that never made it into the final game. Or maybe we're just all reading too much into this and we need to stop. And that's it for this video. Shoutouts to Grandma, Ketrin, Andreas, Gigglyman, MTH, and everybody else involved in finding the discoveries that I covered in this video. I have been getting a lot of requests from some of you to document the discoveries found in Christmas Nights and Journey of Dreams, um, so I'm going to be working on those videos slowly over the next couple of months. Um, in the meantime, if you're interested in learning more about the Datamine project yourself, or you want to contribute to it in some way, then please check the video description. All the relevant links are in there. I've been Digi Valentine, thanks for your time, take care and stay safe.